Hello everybody, today we are going to see one more topic of the cloud computing subject that is nothing but cloud computing architecture. We have been seeing the advantages of cloud computing, but what is the architecture, how cloud computing works we will know in this session. So the architecture includes four layers, the first layer is the user layer or the client layer which is the lowest most layer, next we have network layer, then cloud management layer and hardware resource layer. So we will see one by one what each layer is going to provide us and how does it works. The first layer is the user or client layer. So this uh, the user or clients belong to this layer. So this is the lowest most layer of the cloud computing architecture. From here uh, the connection initiates. So whenever user wants to connect to the cloud, uh, cloud computing from here user starts the connection. So uh, the client can be any device it can be a thin client, it can be a thick client or it can be a mobile or any handheld device that supports functionalities to connect to a uh, to the web application. So actually cloud is nothing but it is also a web application but the difference uh, is a, it's a little difference will be there internal working will be different but it is a web application thing. So what is the thin client? Thin client have not got the complete capabilities it has got little less or low processing capabilities. So it is completely dependent on some other system for its complete functionality. So that is the thick, thin client. Next we have thick client, thick clients are nothing but general computers that have adequate processing capability, they are sufficient capability and they are independent, they can directly connect to the cloud computing. So usually as I said cloud computation, cloud application can be accessed the same way as web application but the properties internally some different and uh, some significant difference will be there uh, in the properties or in the working of the cloud application and the uh, web application. So this is the first layer. Next we have network layer. Network layer this is the layer through which the user gets or the client gets connected to the cloud. The whole cloud infrastructure is dependent on this connection where the services are offered to the customers. Because without internet connection you cannot connect to the client because without network, network is nothing but it is internet, network of networks we are connecting, getting connected to the uh, devices. So this is primarily the internet in case of public cloud. So uh, because public cloud can be available anywhere on any system in the world. So you need to get connected to this cloud computation to this device anywhere on the network. So here uh, internet is required. In case of private connectivity uh, that uh, network is provided by local area network. So this is the very most important layer of the cloud computing architecture because inter without internet you cannot, you cannot get connected to the uh, resources which are available somewhere on in the world. So if you want to get connected to the computing resources or cloud uh, resources which are provided by different parties then you need to have internet without internet you cannot do connection. Third layer is nothing but the management layer which is going to manage the cloud. So it consists of the softwares which are provided by the cloud. The softwares can be cloud operating system or a software that acts as an interface between the data center and the actual resource or a management software that allows the resources. Means what any software which is required to get connected to the cloud all those softwares will fall in this layer uh, and these softwares allow resource management like scheduling provisioning like we want some resources we want to have memory storage we will ask for some memory storage servers or if you want to put some applications we need some and our servers for the applications so it is provided so an optimization is also done so how many resources are required what resources are required it is optimized and used properly based on your workload based on your work whatever work app, applications you are going to install what work you have to do you will optimize uh, the thing and internal cloud governance is also required how uh, resources are working whatever requirements are there of the organization is that done properly or not that all is managed by this cloud management layer. Next we have in a cloud management layer one, one more thing in cloud management layer is it comes under the purview of service level agreements which is known as SLS. SLS in, the, in, in case of any discrepancy in SLS, uh, violation of any, in a, if you are, in a means cloud, uh, part, in a cloud organization is providing some service and if there is any discrepancy then it will be penalized. So as per rules 
any SLA violation would result in a penalty to be given by the service provider. So, uh, so this is what this layer is very important layer uh, from the point of view of the party which is going to provide cloud service to us. So, they should be careful if they do not provide service properly, they are getting going to get penalized. So, whatever resources that are provided by the uh, cloud, they should do it properly otherwise they will be penalized. So, this layer is very important from their perspective. Next finally, we have hardware resource layer. So, these are these layer consists of uh, provisions for actual hardware resources, means what how many machines are required how many services are required, what type of services required, uh, those all is divided and uh, is, is done in this. So, in case of a public cloud, a data center is used in the back end or uh, similarly in private cloud, it can be a data center, a data center which is a huge collection of hardware resources interconnected to each other that is pres present in a specific location or a high configuration system. So, any resource uh, which are provided by the uh, cloud are available in this layer. So, all the resources servers, a simple storage devices or uh, uh, whatever services you want those are for, for those all will fall under into this layer. So, this is the fourth layer. This layer also comes under the purview of SLS. So, if you do not uh, provide uh, the proper uh, service then you are going to get penalized. So, whenever means what whenever a user access the cloud it should be available to the users as quickly as possible and should be within the time that is defined by the SLS. So, some time, time limit is given, I want to use the services for this time, this period of time and my and I, and, and my internet traffic will be high at this time. So, at this time I need more servers, those all agreements whatever are done by the cloud parties they have to provide. So, as mentioned if there is any discrepancy in provisioning the resources or application the service pro provider has to pay the penalty. So, hence the data center consists of high speed network connection and a highly efficient algorithm uh, the data uh, high, uh, to transfer the data from data center to the manager. Means what whatever algorithms uh, which will do high uh, the efficiency so that working is done properly and whatever data is to be transferred uh, at high rate. So, those all algorithms are applied and it is available in this layer and whatever resources are required for the cloud services to be provided by the cloud to the clients, those all things are available in this layer. So, if they are not uh, doing it properly at the proper time, they will be penalized. So, this is the final layer which is going to do our service. Thank you.